I'm making here a very short video summary of the practical. Again, the practical itself was a bit long, so here is a summarized version of it. So in this practical, we focused on uh, analyzing some images. And in particular, I chose some images of leaves because these are uh, some convenient objects because they are, they are two dimensional and they quite, are quite easy to uh, digitalize in a, in a way that we can process uh, easily. So the task will be starting from some pictures or scans of plant leaves to calculate some morphological parameters, such as the size or some measure of shape of these leaves to compare them. We could be interested in making a comparison across plant species, but in this example, we focus on comparing leaves of ivy grown on the same plant. So there is a, some variability in shape for ivy leaves. Those that cr grow closer to the soil tend to be different in shape and possibly in size from those that grow, grow higher up in the plant. Mm -hmm. So uh, before we start any uh, image analysis task, we should focus on thinking about the broad steps that we want to achieve. Mm -hmm. The first step is that we want to have a digital image starting from the real objects. So we could do, um, we could take a picture with a camera or with a phone, or we could scan them with the scanner, which is what I did in this case, to get the first image here on the, on the left. Then uh, we want to uh, separate the, those pixels that represent leaves from the pixels that represent background. And this is the step of image segmentation. There are different ways of segmenting an image we have seen in the, in the past. One of these ways will be the simple thresholding, which is the one that we are going to use in this practical. And finally, you want to label each image, each leaf independently as a different object so that you can run some analysis on individual objects. And the reason why we can do a segmentation by using a simple threshold is because the leaves here are of a very different color, different brightness from the background. So when you look at, uh, at images in which the histogram has two clear peaks, one, se one separated by the other, it is clear that if you just split the pixels, depending on the value of, uh, of each pixel, you are very likely to separate the two objects. Okay, so this is uh, the why thresholding can be used as a segmentation method in some cases. Then the other step is the um, labeling connected components. And we have seen before, um, labeling connected components is a method of associating pixels with their neighbors to group them together to form an object. And when we run uh, this connected component labeling, often we have to decide what kind of criteria we use to decide that if two pixels are neighbors or not. If we say that they are neighbors, if they share either a face or a corner, so what is called the eight connected regions, these pixels would all belong to a single object. But if we decide that we only consider uh, pixels to belong to the same object if they share a, um, a face, then you would have all this group together as a single object, but not together with this in blue, because uh, the, the red pixel here and the blue pixel here just share a corner, which is not considered as uh, adjacent in this connectivity uh, criterion. And so this would make different objects. This is a little bit technical, but it's something that is worth knowing. Uh, and I will show probably in the practical why it can be important. And then uh, after we have done these three initial steps, uh, the steps of image processing, in which you go from an image of leaves to 
another image in which uh, each leaf is labeled as a component, but it, it, it's just another image, you want to measure them and calculate some properties. Some are very simple to calculate. For instance, the area of a leaf is just the number of pixels that comprise the, the leaf. The perimeter is also relatively simple to calculate. You can uh, imagine that uh, approximately this is the number of pixels on the edge, even if it is not exactly this, but roughly the perimeter is the number of how many pixels are on the edge of the image. Um, while if you want to measure uh, properties of the shape rather than the size, you need to be a bit more careful because shape uh, depends on uh, the, the, so perimeter and area don't scale in the same way with object size. I, I make this, in ex, this example. Here we have some squares, so uh, everybody agrees that they, each square is a square. They are all the same shape. If we try to characterize them in terms of, say, ratio between perimeter and area, we see that this doesn't work because the, um, the perimeter increases from 4 to 8, to 12, uh, to 16 here, while the area increases from 1, 4, 9, uh, 16. So uh, perimeter and area don't scale in the same way. So if we want to design some measures that focuses on shape, ignoring size, we probably need to have something that uh, uh, weights area over the square of perimeter. And one of these measures is circularity. Circularity is based on comparing the area and perimeter for a circle and uh, imposing with this normalization for pi here that when an object is a perfect circle, the circularity value is one. While if the object is not a circle, necessarily, the perimeter will be longer for the same value of area. And so you, you will have more perimeter and less area that is enclosed inside that perimeter. And so the circularity will be smaller than one. So this is a measure of how circular an object is. Of course, there are many other measures of shape, but for the purpose of our module, we just focus on circularity as an example. And so if we run this sort of analysis on leaves of different species or leaves that grow at different places on the, on the plant, we can see easily that we can make a quantitative analysis of these objects. So uh, through image analysis, we, we, we start from an object, we take a picture, we process the image to create uh, a labeled image, and then we analyze these labeled images to uh, create, to produce data that we can plot and run statistical tests on if we want. I will now move, sorry, um, I will now move to Moodle here, where we can download the images that we use today, the images for the practical, and I have done it already on my desktop here. There are two images of leaf, of ivy that I, I want to focus on. Uh, some that grow near the top of the plant and some that grow near the bottom of the plant. And they, uh, there are also a few errors in these images. There is one here that uh, is a little bit broken in a piece. One image also includes a stem for some reason. And uh, these are the kind of images that I have. I know that these images were uh, acquired, digitized at 200 DPI, 200 digits per inch, which should be seven, about 79 uh, pixels per uh, centimeter. But we will uh, check this later. So I open the software that we use, that is uh, Fiji here. It, it opens like this. Okay, and uh, I can uh, open the file well, with file open or simply I can drag and drop the image inside the software here. Mm. 
Now, because we want to analyze these images, we want to extract numbers about this, the, for instance, the area of the leaf, leaves, uh, we need to decide what kind of units we use for the area. If we want to use pixels, then it's fine, we can just run the analysis. Hmm? But uh, image A also gives us the possibility to set a scale so that we can have the actual area, not in number of pixels, but in numbers of, um, say, centimeters squared. So I, I zoom on the image by pressing plus button, for instance, or minus here, or I can also use the magnifying glass here. And you see that there is a ruler at the bottom. Uh, unfortunately, the numbers are not well visible, but each here is a unit is one centimeter. And I can use this ruler to set the scale automatically in image A. So I go and take the selection, the line selection tool, and select a certain number of, of centimeters. One, two, three, four, say five, for instance. Okay five centimeters, and I use this to set the scale. So I go to analyze and then set scale. And I set the scale, uh, I get the number of distance in pixels, which is the distance that I have just measured. And I, I know that this distance in centimeters is actually five centimeters. I leave this to one because this is the pixel expectation is uh, one. So it, it, the, the scale is the same on the X and Y direction of the image. And I can set this to global if I want so that it will be kept in memory for the next image. Okay. And now it is saved. If, if I actually open the same menu again and I go to set scale, uh, okay, I, I can also see that this scale is 78.4 pixels per centimeter which corresponds to the uh, number that I was expecting uh, of uh, 200 DPI, 200 digits per inch, or uh, about 78, 79 pixels per centimeter. Um, I zoom back, and this is my image. I can remove the selection by going to Edit, Selection, Select None. And now the, the steps that I need to achieve. This is a color image. It is convenient to work on a grayscale image so that I only have one, uh, one channel, one piece of information that I, I need to focus on. So I go to image type 8-bit, which converts the image to grayscale. The actual conversion depends a little bit on the settings that you have, but this is um, not important now. It, you could convert it to grayscale in different ways weighting differently the uh, red, green, and blue channels. So we have a grayscale image. Now, uh, what we want to do with this grayscale image is to uh, uh, threshold it to achieve the segmentation step. So I go to image, adjust, threshold, I can, and then you can see that uh, in this case, the leaves have, be, have become red and I see the histogram. The histogram shows clearly that there are a, a bright, some bright, uh, some dark pixels here, the leaves, and some bright pixels, the background here. And if I want to check, to select the leaves, I need to se select this red region here around the leaves. I could move to include uh, different things or maybe even to, to select the background rather than the leaves or something else. What I really want is to have the uh, leaves in red, which is uh, my object, and then uh, the background in white. And I said, apply. So I have the leaves. I also have this uh, ruler and this object, and I will take care of them later. Another thing that I notice is that this, there are a few black pixels inside the leaves, uh, which were not segmented correctly. So, and for this, I can use some of the binary uh, operators to correct this error. So for instance, I go uh, to the uh, process binary, fill holes, and it fills these different holes. So now I have a, a binary image. I need to segment it to uh, obtain a, a labeled image. There are different methods to, to achieve this. One is using image A itself. So I can again go to the analyze menu. But before I do this, I will uh, set which measurements I'm collecting on this image. I'm collecting the value for the area, 
the perimeter, the center of mass, and some shape descriptors, which is more, more or less all I, what I want. I may not even want the center of mass, but I'm collecting it anyway, just uh, to illustrate how it, it works. Now I've set these measurements. Your measurements could be different if you tick different boxes here. And now I go to the analyze, analyze particles menu. It asks me for some criteria of inclusion of the, these particles. So should we take any size or just objects that are within a certain size, size range? Currently it is from zero to infinity, so everything is taken. But this is usually not a very good idea because I'm going to take also uh, analysis of all these strange pixels for the ruler or the numbers or maybe some isolated pixel that is not even well visible in the image, but could be there. So I, I, I say that if, if my units are centimeter square, maybe I just want things that are at least say uh, three centimeters square. So let, let's do two centimeters squares. And maybe because leaves are a bit circular, I could also impose a constraint on circularity and say that I want objects that are a little bit circular, maybe uh, from zero three. And it's useful if I show the outlines at the end of the process so that I get an idea of what I've actually selected. I've display results, yes. And here I'm including holes, which doesn't matter because I filled the holes already. So let's see how it goes. Yes, so I can check that I have this uh, component selected. Luckily, I didn't uh, include the stem because uh, uh, removing uh, values of circularity be below a certain value allowed to remove the stem. And I see that I seem to have all the leaves. So the segmentation and the identification of the connected components went well. And I, uh, um, image produces this table where I can also verify if, if I had in this table a single pixel or a, a this would appear as an object with a very small area. So I could later on check that this is not a leaf and remove it from the analysis. So I have this table and I can just go to File, Save As, and uh, Save As. Uh, so these are uh, ivy leaves from the um, bottom of plant. Mm. And I save as a comma separated file, a value file, okay? And then I can do exactly the same thing with the other uh, image. Close this. And I can do the same thing, drag and drop here. I have a RGB image. Uh, in this case, if I go to set scale, I can check that the scale is still the same. So I don't need to set the scale again, but uh, it's good to check every time to be sure. Um, so I, I want to convert to grayscale, image type 8-bit, uh, then uh, threshold, image adjust threshold. Uh, the leaves are good, okay, apply. Now I also do the same filling goals, image. Uh, sorry, process, binary, fill holes. Seems good for the moment. Now, if I look carefully to this, uh, this image, there is a small problem here because these two leaves are touching each other. So I would get the wrong value in this position. One option I could try is the uh, watershed uh, transform, but uh, probably it is not the best option for these leaves because they are not circular objects. So I'll try it just to illustrate how it works. So process binary watershed. It splits, in this case, it splits the two leaves here and it seems to have worked because it didn't introduce any other uh, cut that I didn't want, okay? Mm -hmm. So the watershed works, but I, I tried to undo now, and I showed that there is another method that maybe it's a bit trivial, but I can also use, which is se select a pencil. I can, uh, if, uh, if I want, I, I can use this pencil. If I double click, I get the color, which is black, and the width, which is two. Let's try with one, just to illustrate something and set okay. And I can zoom 
with a plus here. Okay, and then try to draw manually just small line here. Okay, so I'm, I'm creating this image. And this, uh, this is an example of why it can be important to be careful about the, uh, the type of connectivity measure that we use, uh, connectivity criterion that we use if we use four or eight connectivity. Because in this case, you see that I have drawn this line. The two leaves are actually separated in terms of four connectivity because they, they only share corners. But if I were to use an eight connectivity, they would appear as the same object. Okay, so this is something to be uh, quite uh, wary about. Now for the time being, I just do it again, double click on the pencil, set the size of the two. And in this case, uh, I can make sure that they are separated, okay? So I have these images, same steps as before, analyze, analyze particles, uh, same criteria, let's try the same criteria as before, results. I get the, 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 all of them labeled correctly, and they uh, and they produce this table here. File, uh, save as to save the table. So this is this ivy leaves uh, top of plants of plant. Okay. This is one method. As I said maybe before, uh, in image you have many plugins that can be used. So we could also run the same operations through a plugin. So for instance, if I go to plugin here, I have this previously start the PortfolioJ plugin. How did I do this? I just go to help, update. This is Fiji, okay, this uh, version of image J. I go to help, update. It takes some time to check all the update sites. And uh, after I've done this, okay, it's done now. Uh, my, my image is, is up to date. If I go to manage update sites here, I can, uh, I know that this MorphoLibJ plugin is called this IJPB plugins. I need to tick this bo box close and apply changes. I, I don't need to do it because it's already installed on my computer. And when I have done, just close and I have to restart image A. So I have this plugin, so I can do the same thing by using a plugin. I go to MorphoLibJ. This is a binary image, so I go in the menu for binary images. And I can run the connected components labeling, for instance. And I need to set the connectivity in this case, four or eight is fine because I made a large line here. It doesn't really matter. The type of results has 16 bits is important because you want to have a different label for each, uh, for each uh, leaf. In this case, there are, I, I don't know, but maybe 20 leaves and something like this. And if you also include all the small components that may come out because of this ruler, maybe you, go, you can go to 100, but the number is limited. So uh, you know that in eight bits image, you can store numbers from zero to 255. So uh, if you have few components, you can use a, a result with eight bits, but otherwise most of the times it's useful if you use 16 bits so that you have enough in case you have many objects. This often is the case when you work not with leaves, but maybe with cells, and then you can have maybe more than 256 cells in a single image, okay? So I, I, in any case, if 16 bits is probably a good, uh, amount of memory to have a different color, a different label for each uh, component. And here you see it barely probably, but you see that there are uh, different colors. If I go over the images here, I can see the pixel value and I see that there is a different label for each of them. Some are almost invisible because they are dark, but I have labeled them. And I can also, from the same plugin, uh, MorphoLibJ again, now I have a label image and I can say that I want to, for instance, uh, filter on the sides to remove all the small uh, labels. So say filter smaller than, let's try 1000 pixels, okay? 
And I still have a, a little bit of the ruler. So even 1000 maybe was not enough. So I can try another, uh, another number, more for libj. Um, sorry, we, we have a lab, label image, labs, label size filters. So 5,000, I want to, to put a very big number. I still have the ruler, but okay, let, let's say that I don't care for the moment. Uh, and then I can have this label image and I can run the analysis steps, the so plugin, MorphoLibJ, analyze, and I can do this analyze regions. It takes a number of, uh, of measures. Maybe I don't care about many of these. Uh, so, well, I'll keep the centroid, the circularity area perimeter. So it's the same as before. And I get my table in this in a similar way. So I think one of the advantages of using this MorphoLibJ is that I can also, for instance, make nice colored uh, images. So MorphoLibJ label image, and then uh, set la labels to uh, RGB. But I can also set the scale to um, uh, to color. Uh, as, through a measure. So after I have measured them, I could color them as a function of the area, for instance. So uh, I close the, the, the image before. So I, I'm in label image. And so I go analyze again because uh, I closed it. Uh, okay, every time I offer all these options here. And go. And then uh, if I go to plugin, MorphoLibJ again, and in this case, the label image assign measure, I try to assign the area, for instance, this. So the, the largest areas are brighter colors. Mm -hmm. And finally, I can have, a, instead of grayscale, I can ask for a, um, for a color image. So just the side of a color map, background is white, don't shuffle and let's see. And now I get a, a reddish colors for larger leaves. I export this table, whatever method I use to, to get the table. And then I can use, uh, I can just plot the result in uh, whatever way I prefer. <laughs> 